Hello and welcome to today's physics lecture in continuation to the previous lecture what we have discussed about EM induction or electromagnetic induction. Right? Now in the previous lecture we have seen the Faraday's laws as well as the Lenz law. Right? Now over there we have seen that if the magnetic flux it could be changed with respect to time then an EMF is induced and the direction of that induced EMF is given by the Lenz law it states that the direction would be as such that it opposes the change that is producing it right now we shall be understanding a very important concept in the light of this physics and electromagnetic induction which is known as eddy currents, right? First of all to understand the eddy current we need to understand that by which procedures we could basically change the magnetic flux with respect to time, right? First of all, this is the magnetic flux changing with respect to time, so we can write it as d by dt component of phi. So, the d by dt component of phi, how it could be changed, right? The first procedure could be that either we could change the magnetic flux, right? Change in magnetic flux, right? Which is again subdivided, the flux is basically equals to this thing, the dot product of the magnetic field and the area vector, right? So, which in turn will go in two divides, this is for B and this is for A. So, if we do change B, If we change this B, we could get a change in phi with respect to time, the magnetic flux. Likewise, if we could change the area, we could understand that this B is changing. Okay, but how could we change the area, right? For example, a rectangular piece of a conducting like the copper sheet is given. How can we change the area? Shall we fold it or shall we cut it? No. Observe minutely. If say this is an area given, right? And in this area, the magnetic field or B is really inward, right? So we will be denoting it by this because now it is going inside this plane of the whiteboard, right? Over here we have first of all put a say copper sheet, a conducting copper sheet as such. So the area was full, but after a few minutes, if we change now the orientation as such, that we drag this component, we are dragging this like copper sheet as such that it became like this. Now observe, in the first scenario, 
The entire region was the entire area of this blue, bounded by this blue line. The entire area of this copper sheet was inside the influence of this B, right? But when we have dragged it, the only area now that will be effective for this change will be only the area which is inside. So the area of this conducting copper plate which is outside would not be in consideration. So for example, previously the area was of around 100 centimeters square. Now it is say 50 centimeters square. So by this procedure, we are able to change the area, the magnitude, right? So we are able to change the magnitude of B and we are able to change the magnitude of A. Now observe minutely again, this is actually the pi, this is a dot product of B and A, which means that the angle is also in consideration. If we do find out the magnitude of this uh, phi, the phi will be equals to the magnitude of B multiplied by the magnitude of A multiplied by cos theta, where theta is the angle between this B vector and A vector, right? So, a third scenario arises that if we do change the orientation of this conducting plate this was now like this and we have now changed the orientation somewhat like this right so this this was the plate now we have changed this plate orientation like this so the orientation has changed there is an angle change so we could also make this changing Phi with respect to time with change of conducting plate orientation so this R there's three ways how we can change phi or the magnetic flux. And whenever we are going to change this magnetic flux, an EMF is surely to get induced within this copper sheet or this conducting sheet. Right? Now the EMF that will get induced will be E D by DT component of phi and from the Lenz law we know that the EMF the direction of this EMF that will be induced will be as such that it will oppose the change that is producing air so there will be a negative sign indicating that it is going to oppose the change. Change of what? The flux. It is producing it, right? From this concept, and like in these concepts, we are now going to understand what is meant by the famous eddy current. Now, what is basically an eddy current? An eddy current is such that if we are going like over here, right, there is a magnetic field, a conducting sheet is over here, right. Now, if we are continuously changing either of these three components with respect to time, then surely an induced EMF is going to happen within this shape and subsequently 
and induced current is going to be generated. Right? So eddy current may be defined as the current the current induced in the conducting metal plate the current will be now induced in this conducting metal plate right such that it is in accordance to the Lenz law. The Lenz law, it means that the current will be induced as such that the direction of that induced current will be opposing this like the change which is producing it okay now if we are going to change either of these three in this kind of scenario a current that will get induced in this say conducting sheet or this conducting metal plate this currents will be formed like whirlpools in a fluid or eddies they will assume the shape of a circular path how let us see for example this is a conducting metal plate right observe minorly that the V is going inside by the famous right hand thumb rule if the V indicates the pointing of our thumb the curling of the other fingers will give us the direction of the current okay now this will be like this the V but there will be an induced EMF or as such that it will oppose the change that is producing it. If this is going like this, the opposite force, it will be in the opposite direction. So now make the thumb over here like this and see in what direction is the finger curling. See, this is anticlockwise. Do not make like this because this is the normal going of the B. But the current or the EMF that will be produced in this red mark shape, metal conducting shape or plate will be as yes, that it will be opposing it. So we have to first of all oppose the direction of this thumb and then we need to call the fingers and we will see that and like a anti-clockwise directional current is now getting produced right so the current that will be produced right now will be like this they will be you know like a form of whirlpool Right? So this is about the AD current. Right? Now, this AD current has got very important characteristics of two things. First of all, also minutely, this is the I or the induced current. We could name this I as IE or the AD current right and we know that the heating effect
will be equal to I E square multiplied by the resistance of this conducting sheet or metal plate multiplied by R multiplied by the time through which this is getting heated right so this will be I E square R E so depending upon the amount of this IE or this eddy current there will be a heating effect in this entire conducting plate metal conducting plate okay placed in such a circumstances of the changing phi okay so first of all this eddy current will give us a heating effect and we have understood that how this actually occurs. This is the eddy current induced in this conducting metal plate placed in a changing magnetic flux with respect to time. Right? So this gives us a heating effect. Now let us go for the demonstration of another kind of experiment say for example let us check that this is one electromagnet and this is another electromagnet this is the north pole of this electromagnet and this is the south pole of this electromagnet over here we have tied a conducting metal plate. Okay, this is the conducting metal plate. Now, so far as this electromagnet and this electromagnet, they are not brought into action. If we are going to oscillate them, this if we are going to oscillate this metal plate which is tied, right, it will oscillate to and fro likewise. Okay. And say for example after an interval of 3 minutes it will again come to rest due to the damping effect. The natural damping effect. Okay, no other damping effects. But now if this electromagnets are being brought into action, so there will be a magnetic field like this. Okay. Now if we are going to oscillate this thing, the area over here, say so for one time of oscillation, it will be over here and then it will go on this side, so it will look like this. The area will be changed, the change of area, which means the rate of change of magnetic flux is now happening. It will oscillate like this, then this, again the area will change and again the area will change, again the area will change, likewise it will go on. So, over here, this g pi by gt is going to happen and as such the AB currents will also take place. Right? So, the AD currents will be taking place in this metal plate. And the induced, this kind of induced current or this induced EMF will be as such that it will oppose the change that is producing it. Which change is producing it? The change in phi, the change in magnetic flux. So it will try that. I want to be in that place where there will be no change in phi. And how could this happen? 
it will say that if I do not change this area, the magnitude of this area, if I do not cut this magnetic field, then this d phi by dt will be equal to zero. If it is equal to zero, there will be no induced EMF, and if there is no induced EMF, there will be no kind of AD currents. So this kind of AD currents now will act in such a direction that it will oppose this change. And on the previous case where we have seen the oscillating is taking place for three minutes, this oscillate will take place for one minute and come to dead stop. So the time period is now less, right? So some damping effect is now in effect, like is now in consideration. Previously, that was a natural damping effect that caused the infinite time oscillation to end only in three minutes. And now, that three minute oscillation has now ended only in one minute. So, there is an extra damping effect. And this damping effect is known as electro magnetic damping right and this electromagnetic damping actually is useful for the braking system where we want to break where we want to stop right so with the help of this electromagnetic damping we can also say that this AD current along with this heating effect also produces another kind of effect known as the breaking effect. Right?